Well, on the retail sales side, one thing to highlight is, of course, that domestic inflation is really low. It was 0.1 percent year over year in the last, you know, the March inflation CPI report. So, you know, that spending growth, while relatively soft in nominal terms, translates more or less directly into real spending. Also, maybe there's a little residual uh, rebound still on the services side. I think we saw most of that last year after the COVID reopening, perhaps incrementally a bit more. Given the extent of the weakness in the property sector, consumer spending is holding up moderately. The, the bigger surprise has again been on the export side, where you know, global growth, global export and trade growth looks like it's picking up at least a little. Uh, China has invested heavily in sectors like green power and EVs that are high growth sectors and where China's you know, taking significant share. China's also seen you know, very strong growth in exports to sanctioned markets like, like for U.S. sanctioned markets like Russia. And then on a real trade weighted basis, the currency has actually depreciated materially over the last couple of years. So even though lately you've had pretty stable renminbi dollar rate, if you take into account the fact that China's had producer price deflation and most of the world had producer price inflation over the past couple of years, the trade weighted renminbi in real terms has fallen more than 10 percent. So Chinese exports are very competitive. That's really where the upside mm. surprise, as okay. we'd see it, is coming from. Andrew, let me ask this in a different way, because, you know, so much emphasis gets placed day in, day out as to oh, when, when a foreign investor is going to look at, you know, the Chinese economic climate and start to see these green shoots. Now, today, you, you could draw two different conclusions, right? You could choose to look at some of the March numbers and say, hey, this is a little bit lousy on the, the out, industrial output. It's a bit lousy on the retail sales front. Or you could look at the, the Q1 GDP numbers and go, well, this was a, a rather significant beat. But in, in terms of what, your, what you would suggest, right, should they just be looking at these Q1 GDP numbers in their totality as a sign that, you know, we get another set of, I suppose, another set of beating numbers on the GDP front in Q2, and that could be perhaps the, the time to start really thinking about reallocating to China? I, from an investment perspective and markets perspective, and you talk about reallocation, our sense is that we probably passed peak bearishness at some point in Q1 in terms of views on the Chinese economy. To be clear, I think many investors are still quite cautious, but relative perhaps to sentiment very late in 2023 or early 2024, there's been a modest bit of improvement reflecting again, you know, largely the performance on the industrial side of the economy. So you really have a tale of two economies. You have the externally exposed, you know, manufacturing economy that's very competitive and growing at a healthy clip, at least in real terms, in volume terms. And then you have the still very challenged domestic property sector, which is probably not bottomed out as yet and is weighing at least partly on consumer spending. So it's really quite a, a mixed story. So far, I think the, the, the story in Q1 that the numbers are telling is essentially that this industrial and export strength has largely offset, at least for the quarter, mm -hmm. Uh, property weakness. Overall, we still think property weakness is going to be a more durable uh, drag and probably going to result in slower growth as we go out into 2025 and beyond.